Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.10 and Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet Module. Welcome to Tutorial 6, Air to Ground Radar Modes. Today we're going to talk about the various modes of the AN-APG-73 radar, which can be employed in air-to-surface mode. Uh, these, in the order that I'm going to cover them, are Map, the Expanded Modes, GMT, or Ground Moving Target, and C mode, which is used for scanning for uh, surface objects on the water. Uh, the aircraft in the real world also has a terrain avoidance mode in air-to-ground radar mode, but that's not currently implemented, so we won't be covering that today. So, without any further ado, how do we actually bring up the radar? Uh, well, in the default uh, setup in nav master mode, the radar is displayed on the right DDI. Uh, it is possible to flip it to surface mode by simply clicking this push button here, and that gives us our uh, surface radar mode. And we can press this button again to return it to surface mode. However, when I'm doing air-to-ground stuff, personally, I prefer just to uh, hit the air-to-ground master mode switch, like so, uh, and that will mean that the default mode on the right DDI is always going to be air to ground or the, the surface radar mode. Uh, another thing to check in fact is if we look down here at the sensors control panel the radar switch needs to be into the operate position. Uh, it can be in standby and in the event that it's in standby it will uh, enunciate standby up here and there'll be no emission. You also get the cross which is the standard way that the radar has of telling you that it's not operating uh, and if it's off uh, it's going to display pretty much the same thing, except it's going to show ready with a with a, a line through it. Uh, let's put that switch back into operate, and we should see the radar will now boot up, uh, and very shortly we should start getting an image out of it. And I wonder, I wonder, let's flip it back and forth. There we go. Okay, I don't know why, for some reason it didn't reset properly, but switching the mode has done the trick. So, uh, this is the standard air-to-ground display. I'm just going to go through the controls and symbology just now. So, around the outside, we've got push buttons to control the currently selected range, and range is enunciated at the top right. Uh, so, we can go all the way out to 160 nautical miles, and all the way down to 5 nautical miles. Uh, I'm going to set it to 40 just now, because that will uh, do the best job for this demonstration. Uh, we can freeze the image by pressing the freeze push button. And what this will do is it will uh, freeze generation of new imagery, so this will be a static image. We can still interact with it, it would still be possible to uh, view the image to um, designate um, targets and things like that. Uh, but in the background, the radar is actually continuing to uh, emit and it's continuing to scan and build up a new picture in the background. As soon as I remove freeze it will then immediately display the new up-to-date image and um, uh, it will continue scanning as normal. Reset will always reset all the options back to their normal uh, settings. You'll see that I just flipped from fan to pencil. Uh, I'll be covering that in, in a moment. That's the uh, beam width setting. Uh, and silence will pop the radar into standby temporarily, much like moving the mood switch that I demonstrated earlier. As always, we get this cross confirming to us that the radar is not currently emitting. If I click silence again, it will return uh, to normal operation and it will display an image after a short uh, delay. Pressing data brings up the data page. Data page allows us to adjust a couple of options. In the case of air to ground, we only have a couple here. So declutter, which is on by default, uh, it uh, inhibits display of the horizon bars and the flight path marker. In air to ground mode, usually because you're not going to be maneuvering while you use this mode, uh, I would recommend just leaving declutter on. We then also have the option for adjusting the gain. Uh, now the gain is going to control how light or dark the image is, basically. Um, now something to keep in mind is that the uh, the image intensity is based upon the strength of the radar return. The radar is scanning the ground uh, and objects which are highly radar reflective will appear brighter than others, and objects that do not reflect the energy very well will be dark. For example, here you can see the sea, which does not reflect radar, all, the, all this water just appears as black, there's no return here at all. Uh, the radar energy is absorbed by the water. 
things that reflect um, will vary in how much they reflect and adjusting the gain might make it easier to tease some of the details out of that. Or many kind of man-made objects will be more reflective and will show up better on the display. And that's it, that's all we have in this mode. Pressing data again will return us to the normal mode. Chan allows us to change the channel the radar is operating on, much like in the air-to-air -air mode. Uh, that's not implemented in the sim. One other thing to note is that down here at the middle, by the way, um, this is the currently selected gain setting. It's saying 5. If I went into data and dumped that down to 3 and came back out, you would see that our current gain is 3. I'm going to leave it on 4, actually, for just now. Uh, we can adjust our azimuth scan. 120 degrees is the maximum. Uh, we can drop it all the way down to 20 degrees, in which case it'll just be scanning a, a narrow area in the middle of our field of view. Uh, we've got settings for 45, 90, and 120. And you should always set that according to the area of interest for you. Uh, of course, the, the lower the azimuth scan, the quicker the image will update. Uh, we've got the push button here to switch the master mode of the radar again between air and surface and uh, it will always enunciate the mode that it's going to switch to when you press it. So this will set us to air and this will set us to surface. Uh, ECCM is currently not implemented but that's the, uh, the countermeasure mode that the radar has against electronic countermeasures. So uh, if you're in a jamming environment you want that setting turned on. We then have the push button to uh, switch through our different sub-modes. We're currently on map. If I press it once, we'll go into ground moving target, GMT. If I press it again, we're going to go into C mode, where it's going to pick up ships. Uh, I'll press it again and take us back to map, because we're going to cover this mode first. We have the enunciation at the top left, as I showed before, just confirming uh, what mode the radar is in, whether it's standby, off, or operating. And these push buttons here allow us to choose the expanded modes. These are different zoomed in and in some cases sharpened modes for the radar, which will give us greater resolution for acquiring targets. I'll cover those in just a moment. And the very last setting we have here is the, the current radar beam width. So pencil is the, the default and we also have an option for fan. This controls the size of the beam with which we're scanning the ground. Pencil will use a very small beam, which will take longer to complete the scans, but will generate, uh, in effect, a higher resolution image. Fan will prioritize a quicker scan, but the result will be slightly more blurred and less distinct. We'll leave it in pencil for now. Uh, one other thing to note is that currently the radar is not the sensor of interest. If I press my sensor select switch to the right, uh, we will get the diamond at the top right hand corner of the display and we get our radar cursor, these two yellow bars which we can move uh, using the TDC. Okay, and let's take a little look at the symbology inside the display now. Uh, so. Most of this information is the own ship information. Uh, at the top here, I have the aircraft's current heading and what will in effect be the bore site down this line here. So we're currently at 237 degrees. Uh, bottom left will be a confirmation of our current airspeed and Mach number. And at the bottom right, our current altitude in thousands of feet. Uh, the range indications are split into quarters. So because we're in a 40 mile mode right now, this is gonna be 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles and 40 miles. Uh, and then you have uh, azimuth uh, kind of left to right here in the display as well. So how do we go about actually designating and refining targets using the radar? Well, we use the TDC to control the cursor here. And I happen to know there's an airfield over here, about here. I'm going to depress my TDC and you'll see I now get this cross at that location. And that cross is called the designation cross. That, in effect, has now created a sensor point of interest. If I move up to the HUD now, you'll see the standard sensor point of interest symbology up on the HUD, uh, which, because it's out of the field of view, is a flashing diamond. And we also have an arrow with a number at the top here, confirming the number of degrees off the nose. So it's telling us in the direction of this arrow, 20 degrees, that's where our sensor point of interest is. We also have on the right hand side confirmation of the range to that target, 30.5 nautical miles. Uh, I'm actually going to 
Oops, unpaused just now because we need to be within 30 nautical miles to make use of EXP3 and I'm just about to demonstrate that. There we go. We're now at 29.5. So if we make our way back down to the display, um, of course, from the standard map screen, it's going to be very hard to pick out anything other than an absolutely massive target. So we're going to want to zoom in a little bit. So we're going to select EXP1. If I press EXP1, it's going to generate what's called a sector map. Now, this is really just a slightly zoomed in uh, view on the standard map view. It works out to 40 nautical miles maximum and it's not ground stabilized. So you can see that we have a bit more detail here um, and it's, um, it's going to center on your currently designated sensor point of interest if there is one. If there isn't one, it will uh, use the middle of the display basically. And if you wanted to refine this, you would have to press nose wheel steering to undesignate and then you could use your cursor again uh, to set the designation point, and then after a few moments, it would redo the scan with that area centered. Let's now go to EXP2. This mode also works out to 40 nautical miles, but it's now ground stabilized, and we get further detail again on the target area. This is called the patch map. Uh, so we can see it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but we can see that it looks very much like this is the runway and there are some uh, other buildings and things around. So I think we've put our target directly on the runway. That's what we want. Let's now go ahead and generate EXP3. Now EXP3 only works out to 30 nautical miles and this is called the, th the synthetic aperture map. And this generates a very high resolution map of the target area. Um, and we have actually, sorry, something I should note is that uh, in the EXP modes, we have a setting down here for fast or for normal modes. In fast, it's going to be a bit more blurred. Uh, I'm actually going to bring the aircraft out of active pause just now and let us get a bit closer because it's um, that image is not brilliant. And I want to wait for a little while and see if we can get a slightly better image out of it. I think because we're at the very edge, <coughs> excuse me, at the very edge of the uh, the, the radar's range there. It's not generating a, a brilliant image. There we go. That's actually getting better and better. Now we can see that we actually have the dispersal area selected there. So let's say that I hit nose wheel steering and then designate here. Uh, it's going to redo the scan and that will actually be centered on the runway, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, the scan's a little bit slow though, so we'll need to give it some time to update. And this is going to tend to be the view that you're going to use for very fine target selection. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to hit freeze now so that that picture doesn't update uh, and I can continue to look at that while uh, coming inbound. And as before, if I look up on the HUD, I've got all of the uh, information and indications to guide me towards that target. I could now use that target for CCRP delivery. Uh, also, if I brought up my targeting pod, it would be looking at that location as well. So we'd be ready to employ weapons using that information. Let me just roll out here. There we go. Let's bring it out of freeze. Ah, yes. Now, something to note in EXP3, because we're using Doppler beam sharpening, it can't actually generate a, an image directly off the nose. Uh, we need to be at least uh, kind of 10 degrees or so off the nose before we'll start to see an image. So let's uh, give it a moment there and it should update. Again, it's doing it quite slowly. If we had a requirement for a faster update, we could choose the fast mode, but then the image is going to be much more blurred. And you're going to find that actually the further off the nose you go, the better the quality of the image because the uh, the Doppler effect will refine the image for you there. So uh, that's the map mode and the three expanded modes uh, fully explained. Uh, I'm going to reset the situation and then we'll jump straight into GMT and then C modes. Okay, so I've reset the simulation and we're back inbound on the same area as before. And now we're going to switch to GMT mode. Now in GMT mode, the majority of the symbology and information is the same. The difference is though that by default, we're not seeing the raw radar returns from the terrain. We're just seeing the scan back and forth. And then in the event that the system picks up moving targets, now these will be vehicles, uh, it will display bricks on the display, which we can then target. I'm going to press sensor select switch to the right to make this my sensor of interest and get control over the TDC. Um, 
so yeah, th those are the main the main controls here. We can also select interleaved. And with interleaved mode, it will do one scan in mapping and then one scan in GMT interleaved continuously. So you get a bit of situational awareness about what exactly it is you're looking at. Let's bump this out to 40 nautical miles just now, uh, and we'll be able to see the area we're looking for. Now I've got a vehicle driving up and down the uh, runway at that particular place uh, up ahead. So if I come out of interleaved, we'll just get the bricks. And if I move my cursor over the brick, and press sensor select switch to the right, it will target track that ground moving target. Let's uh, let's pause the simulation very quickly and we'll zoom down on this and get some uh, further detail on exactly what this is telling us. So the brick is the location of the target. On the right hand side, we have confirmation of its heading. And on the left hand side, we have confirmation of its current speed in knots. Uh, and it, we have the enunciation track at the bottom of the screen. If I go up to the HUD, as before, we're going to have confirmation that we have a radar target, its current range, and the diamond will tell us exactly where that is. And once again, this is a sensor point of interest. So we could then employ, uh, you know, guided weapons, uh, we could uh, use guns, we could do a CCRP delivery, whatever we want to do, uh, we'd be able to then engage this target. Pressing nose wheel steering will break the lock and take us back to the normal display. Uh, we also have the ability to do the expanded modes much in the same way as we did before uh, in map mode. And these will work pretty much the same uh, as before. Uh, we probably want it to be an interleaved. Well, actually, we can't have it interleaved for those modes. Interesting. Uh, but that's the basics of the operation of this mode, really. All you're doing is pushing your cursor over the target and you need to push sensor select switch in the direction of the DDI that is currently displaying the radar. So once again, there's me locking up a target in GMT and nose wheel steering will break that lock. Uh, let's pop the simulation into active pause and we're going to switch to C mode. Now C mode works in basically exactly the same way as GMT, uh, the only difference being that it's looking for ships, it's looking for C targets. And out here we can see two of them, once again represented as bricks. As before, we can press interleaved and it will give us uh, a map scan in between each C scan, and that will give us some uh, situational awareness as to where the terrain is. Uh, and um, again, as in map mode, and this works in GMT as well, we could reduce the azimuth of the scan and get very fast updates, and uh, that would that would give us very, very fast updating information on these targets. As in GMT, I can put my cursor over the target and press sensor select switch to the right to track that target. This one's going at 13 knots, heading 030. We also have a little line confirming that direction of travel. And let's take a little look at the left-hand one. He's doing 26 knots, uh, heading 149. Uh, and that's pretty much it. These are very, very simple, easy to use modes. There's not really that much to keep in mind. Uh, as before, we can freeze the image, we can silence the radar, we can reset it, all that kind of stuff. So, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Those are the basics of using the air-to-ground radar in the FA-18C Hornet. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.